Hey, how you doing, everybody? This is Robert Rivera with another episode of Who's On First, the show. And we have a special guest, Joey, and he's doing um, sort of kind of like fantasy baseball, but not fantasy baseball. It's mistaken for fantasy baseball. It's actually uh, the spirit of it is it's a fictional writing project called Utopian Baseball Universe. Okay. Um, so what I did a couple years ago was I, uh, I created basically a 32 team league, uh, four divisions of eight, and I built rosters and I wanted to figure out a way to kind of simulate this just to occupy my mind. And um, in 2020, I did this for like 30 friends, not this uh, past February, but February of 2021. It just word of mouth got out and within like three months, uh, it went from about 60 people to a thousand. And now we're at about 1500. Basically the way it works is uh, every day I ask a member of the group to give me a year from baseball history. And then I spin a wheel and it chooses a date from that season. I take all those results and I shuffle them and I map them into my own schedule and then every night, uh, either on a write-up or a, a video summary, uh, we just kind of give the results as if they're actually happening. So uh, this is our third season. Uh, people are very into it. It's To me, it's no different than if someone uh, invests time into a show on Netflix or a great book. They just, they want to see what happens. And uh, we're having a good time presenting it and, and building a really cool baseball community on Facebook and YouTube. Where did this, this brainchild come from? Where did, who, who started this? So actually, sadly, my dad passed away in 2014, and I just wanted something to keep me busy, keep me productive. 2014 is when I built the schedule, and then it really just sat on my desktop for about five years. And then in, um, I want to say November of 2019, I started building rosters, telling friends and family about it. And I didn't even have a name for it until March, early March of 2020. Um, I dreamt Utopian Baseball Universe. And it's funny because I, I wrote a book in 2008 and I dreamt the title of that too. And, and really it was just going to be like 10 or 20 friends because there was nothing going on at the start of the pandemic. Delaney Bry from the, one of the local channels here in Milwaukee uh, saw it on Twitter and interviewed me on the news so then our membership doubled. It seemed like overnight we went from like 11 or 12 people to 30. Okay. And by the end of the year, we were at like between 60 and 80. And it just word of mouth got out and people started asking about it. Other baseball groups say, hey, are you the utopian guy or whatever? And, and now, like I said, we're at about 1,500 members. It's a very interactive project uh, because like I said, um, our members choose the years. We have a website, you know, basically an interactive wheel that chooses the dates. And then every night I present those results uh, as if they're happening and just having a great time doing it. I honestly spend about three hours a night. I've got journals and notebooks and everything and spreadsheets. And I, I, I can't imagine not doing it at this point. Now you talked about your dad. Is he the one that introduced you to the game and the, the love of the game? You know what? That would be the easy, safe answer. It actually was my cousin, Lisa. Okay. Uh, when I was like five or six years old, she took me to a park and we found a glove just in the middle of the park and we used it. And I said, can I bring it home? And she said, well, this is probably someone's glove. We'll leave it here for a couple of days. And if it's, if it's here in a couple of days, you can have it. And we went back a couple of days later and she put it on my hand and she wrote the word ouch in the middle of it and my name and that was it. Uh, it's been a love affair ever since. That was probably 1981. Okay. So who's your favorite team? I see you got a Mets uh, hat there. So the, all right. So I, I actually, there's another group I belong to called NL East Baseball Uncensored. And I was uh, called a Fairweather fan because I was wearing like a Padres hat or something. I, I've been a Mets fan since 1984. Uh, the day we got cable, the cable guy literally highlighted every Mets and Cubs and Braves game, all the super stations. And my grandma and I, my grandma and I actually watched the Cubs uh, pretty much every day for about six years. And then at night and weekends, I would watch the Mets. And I just, I've stuck with the Mets for almost 30, uh, 40 years now. So like when, when I was called a Fairweather fan, I mean, the weather has not been great. 
<laughs> as a Mets fan. Like they won the World Series when I was uh, 11. And, uh, you know, we've been back a couple times, but we haven't really been uh, close since. So, right. yeah, uh, Mets are my first team. I, I mentioned I wrote that book in 2008 about being a dual fan because I, I live here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're just north of. So I love the Brewers, too. Uh, Brewers were my first uh, major league game in, in 1983, which was the year after they went to the World Series. But that book helped me determine that I truly am a Mets fan uh, first. If you guys find me on Facebook, I'm wearing Phillies today because they're playing the Braves and the Braves are like five games behind us. So I'm just supporting the Phillies for three days. <laughs> so now you say you mentioned the book there. And what's what's this book about? So uh, I was at um, Miller Park in 2008 or uh, 2007 when Tom Glavin was going for 300 against the Brewers and the Brewers won in like 14 innings. And I was walking back to my car. Brewer fans like from the town I'm from were bullying me, uh, not physically, but they were just like, ah, go back to the Bronx. And I had to correct them and say, well, I think you mean Queens. And I said, I'm actually a, I'm a season ticket holder for the Brewers. I just happen to be a Mets fan. <laughs> and I was walking, walking back to my car, and uh, the next the next day at work, I told the guy I was with, I said, I think I'm going to write a book about just being a dual fan. Like, it's not the weirdest thing in the world. I'm from Wisconsin, so that explains how I'm a Brewers fan, and I've been a Mets right. fan since age seven. So that's what the book's about. It's called Two Loves. Uh, it's about being a Brewers and Mets fan. It's a journal. It reads like a journal. Uh, the 2008 season. And uh, I realized at the end of it, because the Brewers clinched a playoff, uh, their first playoff appearance in like 26 years. And it was, it was kind of cool. But then 10 minutes later, the Mets season ended with a loss to the Marlins. And I was just like heartbroken. So I realized that day that I'm a Mets fan first. Okay. All right. Who are the people that are uh, attracted to it? Who's the one that, that most of the people that you see, is it mostly women? Is it mostly men or... I got to be honest, I, I would say right now, my ideal uh, member in that group are people that are maybe a little jaded by what's going on with Major League Baseball with like the lockout and the emphasis on three true outcomes. Like my biggest fan right now is a guy named Tom McClain, and he just doesn't watch Major League Baseball. He's like, I'm all for this utopian universe. Every morning I post the matchups. Every night I post the results. He's always the first to like and comment. So I think I'm just for uh, anyone looking for an alternative. I'm certainly not trying to be competition for MLB, although a lot of our original content airs just before or just after the games. So like we do a lot of game streams at like 10 o'clock central or five o'clock central, but really just the passionate baseball fan, men, women, young, old. Um, like I said, we're, we're going to hit 1500 probably in the next uh, couple of weeks. So if you yeah. love baseball, it, it's, it's just a fun escape, I would say. Yeah. I mean, I did something sort of along that line, what you do. I just didn't have the simulated game. There was uh, Joe DiMaggio. There was Babe Ruth. There was Hank Aaron in these lineups, Roberto Clemente. So to do it at the end and then all, you know, at the end of the video, we sit there and we go, well, we finished the game. It was a secret score, but it doesn't matter because basically we just want you to enjoy the game, play hard and have fun. What is the stuff that they say to you? The most common feedback I get is kind of the diversity with the roster. So like in 2021, last season, we added every Negro League Hall of Famer. So we put at least one on every team. So I've got, uh, you know, if you name one, I can tell you where it's at. Cool Papa Bell with the Royals. Uh, Smokey Joe Williams with the Pirates, Martin Diego with the Brewers. And then uh, this year I, I added like the top 30 or 40 19th century players, guys like Cy Young and uh, Pete Browning, Dan Brothers. Um, but it's, I think it's what, what people find the most fun is if you look at a lineup, just or, uh, name a team for me, Robert, or just name any major league team. Uh, let's go with the uh, Cincinnati. So Cincinnati uh, on any given night is going to look like this. Johnny Bench catching, Vado at first, Morgan at second, Sabo at third because he was my favorite as a kid. Right, okay. I got Pete Rose in left, Eric Davis in center, got a little platoon in right of Griffey, uh, Senior, Dunn, and Bruce. Uh, your starting rotation, Bullet Joe Rogan, uh, Negro League Hall of Famer, Jose Rio, 
Tom Browning, Luis Castillo, Rob Dibble. So that is the Cincinnati Reds in the Utopian. And, um, you know, it, we have 40 man rosters. So there could be a night where someone like Bubbles Hargrave or uh, Dave Concepcion could be the hero based on the lineups we set for that night. And it's fun because it's like, all right, you're going to see stuff you don't see. Like you're going to see Pete Rose versus Ty Cobb. You're going to see Ichiro versus Eric Davis. And uh, the, the combinations are just endless. People love every morning at 8 a.m. I post the, the lineups and the pitching matchups. And I'm like, God, I would pay to see Satchel Page versus Clayton Kershaw. I would love to see that. Right. And we tell that story on a daily basis and uh, having, a, having a great time doing it. Is this just a program that you put into a computer or is this something that you simulate yourself? It's, it's very random, but I think that's the fun of it. Actually, let's, let's just do this right now. I've got a website up. Uh, give okay. me a year. Give me any year from history, Robert. Any year in history. Um, any, any year I'm from go 1970. 1970. All right. I'm going to give you a month. We're going to say May. Now give me a date. Give me a day from May of 1970. Um, the, uh, 14th. So May 14th, 1970. And I'm going to show you exactly how this works. So I've got all the box scores and then I'll post it. I, I schedule posts. So like what I'm writing tonight, you'll see tomorrow at like nine o'clock. Okay. And I do that basically for 150, our, our schedule is 156 games. And then the top three teams from every division make the postseason. And then we we simulate the entire postseason on uh, RBI Baseball and MLB The Show so that there is a kind of a three-dimensional feel. So it's not just me telling you what happened in the postseason. You guys can all watch it. Right. And then throughout the season, we do uh, RBI game streams every Monday, MLB The Show every Friday night. We do an out-of-the-park have you, are you familiar with Out of the Park? It's like a, it's not a video game, but it's like a data sim. No. With, with graphics. You just keep hitting continue on your keyboard. We okay. do two of those every Thursday. We do that on Sunday mornings. Uh, I, there's a dice simulation I do once a month. So it's just, it's storytelling, um, but we use the past to kind of fill in some of the blanks and like I said, people get excited. They'll say like, oh man, I can't believe the uh, Braves are, you know, they just swept the Yankees. They just, Aaron versus Ruth, I can't believe it. And like, that's what it's all about. It's just kind of. Getting those matches that we never would have yeah, been able exactly. to see. Exactly. Okay. And just enjoying the kind of the what if aspect of it. <laughs> By the way, we are, we are going to use that date for yeah. anyway. We're going to use those four games you gave us. Okay. All right. That'd be great. Who came up with this program? Is it something that is like your little. It's well, you're looking at the program because basically what I do is once I get that date from you, I go to like baseballreference.com or some other website that has the data, and then I just start plugging it into this. Okay. And then spreadsheets. It, it's, it's, I got to be honest, it's so, pretty manual. Okay. So it's, it's not like I can get that program and make my own Utopia universe. You're it. I am it. Yeah. I mean, I use the brain. Like I said, out of the park 22 is something I bought for like $19. I okay. Do that three, three days a week, the RBI and Xbox games. You know. Okay. But other than that, the uh, like, I'm just pulling from websites and doing a lot of manual kind of spreadsheet stuff. Do you see yourself developing something that, you know, that could probably be sold on the market? I mean, if I can monetize this, that would be great. Um, we, I am wearing a, a Utopian Baseball Universe t-shirt. So these are for sale. Most of the money I make on these, I, I use to ship. So like if I buy a shirt for X amount, I sell it for X amount. I take the difference and I ship it out. Uh, you know, we might turn it into more merch, like water bottles and decals and stuff. Right. I would love in a, in a perfect world, if, if someone wanted to buy this idea for me and have me run it and brand it and make this like a thing, that would uh -huh. be great. I'm, I'm trying to build it. I've got a small TikTok community. I've got uh, a small YouTube account, but I would love for this to become my legacy and just be known as the guy that created this universe. There's a lot of people out there doing a lot of stuff and hopefully somebody will see this and say, Hey, you know what? Let's, let's plug this in. That'd be great. That'd be great. When somebody joins, what do they have to do? 
During the off season, I'll invite people. Like once I'm creating and posting stuff, I'm not really inviting a ton of people. If someone friends me on Facebook, as a habit, I will reach out to them and ask if they're a baseball fan and I'll tell them about the group. But um, I, you know, I just kind of ask the group members to say, hey, if you got a, a neighbor or a friend that's into this, uh, bring them on in. Like once a month, I'll go on another Facebook group and I'll ask permission from an admin and say, hey, I noticed your team is off today. Can I mention this? And they're always really cool about it. Hopefully, you know, one viral TikTok will help it grow. Uh, a friend of mine actually doubled my TikTok presence just by saying, check this guy out. Um, so I don't know, like 1500 is pretty cool. Like considering we did this for 60 people two years ago. Yeah. Uh, yep. Once they're in, I, I welcome them and I, I try to get them to choose a date or get them to understand how it works and just try to get people to be interactive. Not everyone's interactive. They just kind of want to see it or whatever, but right. I've got, you know, probably 200 people in that group that are contributing on a, on a regular basis. Ever, ever took like uh let's say um, a Cincinnati championship team and put them against, let's say the, the 86 Mets. Have you ever done that? Well, so the, the cool thing about, the way I simulate this is so like you gave me a, a 1970 year, right? Right. So for, for tomorrow or fr Friday, when I pull from 1970, I'll try to have the lineups for that day be as close to 1970 as possible. Okay. So like if it was Mets reds, you're going to see bench and Rose and guys like that instead of the Vados and the winkers. Okay. But, right, if I right. pull, but if I pull from, you know, 2015, you know, 18, then, you know, Winker's going to get the start, Jonathan India, Dave, you know, uh, Jeff McNeil. So it, that's kind of the fun of it is uh, the Utopian Baseball Universe one night could be all dead ball era. Okay. You know, we're pulling these box scores from like 1907. And then the next night it could be 2017. So it's like you're going from these two to one 15 inning games to, you know, 11 to nine, eight homer type games. And I think that's what keeps it fresh. Okay. All right. What's your favorite player? Just ever. Ever. Forever, ever. Keith Hernandez. Keith Hernandez. Uh, the Mets are on TBS right now as we're recording this. And Ron Darling is working with Bob Costas in the TBS booth. And they were talking about how Keith Hernandez should be in the Hall of Fame for being the greatest uh, fielding first baseman of all time. A guy who actually like changes the way a modern first baseman plays that position and uh, I agree. I think he's one of the greatest ever. And I think we all know why he's not in the Hall of Fame. But yeah, he's my favorite of all time easily. He, he um, I, got, I was lucky enough. I went to Flushing High School uh, during that era. I went in from 84 to 88. And I was right there in Flushing when the Mets did it all. For me, not only was his bat instrumental, but his defense. And I, I don't think he got a lot of credit for the defense because he would actually do stuff to your teams and like if they try to pull a bunt on him i've never seen a first baseman come flying out of nowhere and these guys are trying like do a little chop chop bunt or something like that like he was coming at him and you know and when he stopped he was five six feet away from home plate for me i think a lot of his defense did not get a lot of the praise that he should have gotten. I know he was a gold glover, but uh, yeah, Keith Hernandez is uh, he's one of the he's one of the good guys that that should be in the Hall of Fame. But yeah, you know, you talked about your dad. Who was your dad's favorite teams? You know, again, to to be honest, my dad really wasn't a big sports guy. My dad was a, a tool and die maker for forty three years. Uh, he <laughs> lived to work. He loved watching golf and. Uh, a bigger football game. He really wasn't much of a big baseball guy. Like he, you know, he played softball. He took me to my first game, but I, I can't even answer that question. I will say though, uh, he did look a lot like Gorman Thomas. So okay. he, got mis he, he was mistaken for Gorman Thomas a lot in the early eighties. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I was maybe drawn to Gorman Thomas. And when he, when, when, they, when they traded him in 83, I just cried like a baby. I'm like, how can you just <laughs> trade players? You know, I didn't understand the concept. 
Yeah, my my dad was the one that got us all in the baseball. Me, my brother, my older brother, and we were just everything was baseball, 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 baseball. Well, modern day baseball. What do you what do you think of some of these rules that are coming up? These no pitch walks and these. Oh yeah, I, I think I struck a chord on there, right? No pitch walks. Well, I I'll always love the game of baseball. I I played it from sun up to sundown every day as a kid. I've coached it. I've written about it. I still follow the Mets. I listen to the Brewers. But I, I don't know, like somewhere along the line, there was a little bit of a disconnect. I'm not a fan of the ghost runner on second. When I was a kid, I loved Rob Deere. He, 33% of the time, he would either homer, strike out, or walk. And that was uh, unique to baseball. There were only a couple players that were like that. Deere, Dave Kingman, those types of players. Dave Kingman, yeah. That's the league average right now is like 34%. So 34% of the time you're getting a home run, a strikeout or a walk. So I, I don't enjoy the major league product as much as I did as a kid where guys like Gwyn and Brett and Carew and Yount would just foul off pitch after pitch after pitch until they got theirs. They could swing away. They could hit to the opposite field. This, this overemphasis on strikeouts and home runs is a little bit too much testosterone for me. Uh, but I, I'll always love the game. I, most of the, the uh, baseball I consume these days is at the summer league level. Okay. Uh, you know, these leagues that start, uh, you know, June 1st and end August 1st. Okay. You know, 60 game schedules. There's one eight miles from here that I'm actually going to attend tomorrow and Thursday. So like baseball, I'll never stop loving, but you, you don't create a utopian baseball universe. You don't love the game. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's the premise behind me. It's just the love of the game. Well, listen, I, I wish you luck on the uh, utopian universe. I hope you guys, you go big time and somebody can, picks you up and says, Hey, you know, we're going to turn you into the computer. You're the, you're going to be the computer. <laughs> All right. So if somebody wants to reach out to you, how would, how would they get to reach out to you? Pretty easy to get a hold of. Obviously, the Facebook group is called Utopian Baseball Universe. Uh, email address, utopianbaseballuniverse at gmail.com. We are on TikTok at Joey Parm, J-O-E-Y-P-A-R-M. Uh, I'm on YouTube, Utopian Baseball Universe. So I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. Join the group. We'd love to have you. And uh, look, looking forward to, uh, I'm, I'm just starting to get season four uh, prepared as far as schedule and different ideas for content. So yeah, love to have you. Okay. I said, well, guys, listen, if you want to be part of a fantasy baseball league and you know, sometimes these fantasy baseballs, you got to be really involved in figuring out lineups every day. Blah, blah. Joey is offering something that's different. It's actually sit back, enjoy the game and get to see a matchup of let's say Babe Ruth versus Musgrove. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> never, and uh, it's some interesting stuff. It's one of those things that I was like, wow, I, I, I saw it and I was like, you know, I've been wanting to do something about fantasy baseball and you, you, you gave me something that's a little bit of a twist to it. So guys, go out there, reach out to him and join his club. Thanks, Joe. Thank you for taking time out to be with us. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. you have a good night. Thank you. Keep swinging. If you like the show, please. Do me a favor, subscribe, right? Right, you see it? It's right there. Subscribe, share, like, and don't forget, put that bell on. It'll ding you when I put something else on, all right?